Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Today we're going to be using some rough scruffy boards to mount a vise on this bench. My woodworking vise has been dismounted now for about three years and I really miss it. I finally got a bench big enough to hold it. It's mounted solidly. I'm working my way through getting the final attachment of this, the top of the bench. Before I finish that, I want to put the structure underneath it to support the vise. While I'm doing that, I'm going to have to improvise a few things, but it'll be fun to watch. Stick around. The vise is going to be mounted right here, centrally located over this gap in the bench. To make that work, I want to set the back board of this vise flush with the front of this board. This part of the vise is two and a quarter inches deep. This two by six along the front is only inch and a half. So I'm going to have to add three quarters of an inch of board onto the bottom of that. Roughly something about like that. Now I could use this board, but I really want to stiffen up this two by six and make it really solid. So to accomplish that, I'm going to add a two by four on this side and bring it out even with the front and put a bevel on it so that it will clear my knee and I won't be constantly banging my knee on it. Then I'll mount another one over here on this side, same way. That's going to give me some structure to support the edge of this 2x6, which I left open so that I'd have a clamping edge along the front of the bench. So I'll have it on both sides of the vise, I'll be able to clamp things down to it. And in this section, which is going to be replaceable, I'm going to mount dog holes so that I can uh, use the vise to mount boards up against the, the dog holes. I don't have an in vise on this bench, and I don't intend to. This is a bench that I'm going to be using for projects in the basement. I am still working on a woodworking bench, which will have the in vise and the side vise. But this mechanical vise is more in keeping with this bench. I used this for about three years over at the old house. Uh, it works very nice. It's an inexpensive vise. I picked it up at a discount house called B&G Salvage over in uh, Schoolcraft south of Kalamazoo here. It does have the quick release that allows me to slide the jaw back and forth easily. It's fairly heavy, weighs right around 25 pounds. Good and solid, got good attachment points. So I think this is going to work out very well here. I was very happy with it over in Union City. The only thing I need to do is make sure that the bench is strong enough to hold up to the work that I do in it. To make up for the three quarters of an inch that I lack on the thickness of the bench, I'm going to add this piece. Which is three quarters of an inch thick underneath the front of the bench. And because I'm too cheap to go buy another board just to cut it up a little bit, I'm going to take a piece that I used for a previous project and I'm going to turn it into a board wide enough to fit underneath the bench. And that's going to be the brace that spaces out the, the vise and also strengthens this piece of 2x6. Because of the way I'm building this, 
this board is just a little bit too wide the way it's structured. So I'm going to trim off this bit of extra wood here. And I'm going to do that by clamping it to a sawhorse. So that I can make this board a little narrower along the marked line there, I'm going to use my rip saw and trim off that piece that I don't need. I designed and built this sawhorse so that I could build window frames for my other house. I didn't have a flat bench at the time and I really needed something to work with. So I created this sawhorse and put these bowl holes through it so that I could clamp the window frames down to it after I leveled up the sawhorses. Worked out pretty well, but it's not the best design for ripping. Now I'm going to cut right down the line. bang into the leg of the, the sawhorse so I'm taking short strokes. Why didn't I use the table saw to cut that off? Well, the table saw is in the blacksmith shop, which is outside. There's no power to the blacksmith shop. In order for me to take the 30 seconds it would take to cut off this part, I'd have to do about 25 minutes worth of setup. Dragging out the extension cord to the workshop, hooking it up, clearing off the top of the saw table, which I'm using as a workbench in the blacksmith shop right now, and then I would be able to cut this off. Rip saw took care of it real quick. Also, I don't have to go out and get cold. It's nice down here in the basement. It's warm. It's dry. Good thing to have around. Handsaw makes it so that I'm not bothering my wife and my sister who are upstairs having a conversation. Kind of cool, cool, huh? Step two, check my work. I know I measured it, and I know I cut it along the right line, and I had it marked well. This is just making sure that I'm going to end up flush like I expected it to be. Just perfect. Clean, straight, square. Okay.
Now I'm going to glue this piece underneath the bench. I'm using Tight Bond 3. I'm going to glue this board underneath the bench here using Tight Bond 3. Why am I using waterproof glue? Well, I sure hope it doesn't get that wet down here. But I found it's cheaper and easier to buy it in a large jug. And I can use this for everything. So why not use it for this? Uh, one problem with tight bond glue. The little cap tends to plug up. Even though I had it closed, does tend to get a little bit of goobers right there in the end. There we go. Pop it back on, make sure it's on there the right way. Now I'll be able to spread glue. Perhaps it's my experience as an engineer, but I like jigs and fixtures. I like clamps. I like being able to set things together and verify the fit before I do the finals on them. Clamps allow me to do that. And that's going to be perfect. The device is designed to be mounted with bolts. So it's going to be held very securely to the bench. And because of the way the thing's designed, the bolts will help capture this board onto the bottom of the 2x6. One of the benefits of glue, though, is going to make this board an integral part of this 2x6. Not only is it going to have the clamping force of the bolts, it's going to have actually a bond very similar to the wood growing together. I have a 
drip running out of my glue. Easily taken care of at this point with a simple rag. Having glue extruded out the front, that's a good thing. It means I've got it all the way across the board just like a line. Now, I have it clamped, but I would like to go on and do other things. The clamps would work, but I'd have to wait for the glue to dry. And for a really strong set on it, able to take the kind of punishment I want to give it today, I'd have to wait about four hours. I really don't want to wait four hours. I have time right now. I'd like to continue. So I'm going to use some screws and fasten the boards to the bottom of the 2x6. Just quick and easy. Up through the... Small pieces of wood that I have set up to be glued on there. Okay, solidly anchored. When the glue dries, it will be completely tight and secure. And in the meantime, while I'm waiting for the glue, I can go on and mount my vise onto the bench to add strength to that 2x6 and buttress it. I'm going to cantilever this board off the back of the bench. And to make that work, I'm going to hold it up there, mark it, that's the front edge of the bench, that's the edge where it's going to contact the frame of the bench itself. framing square. Actually it's not a framing square. This is a cheap little plastic square that my dad bought. When I first saw it I thought, well that's a waste of time. Over the years though I found that it's very handy for working in tight little spaces like having junk on the bench or using the big rafter square. It's going to run into stuff. I still use the rafter square. This is handy for marking out little things like this that don't mean a lot. There's that one marked. Now I'm going to use this 2x4. Before anybody asks, I'm going to say, yep, it's shorter. It doesn't need to be 100%. All it really needs is to be there to help support this. When it gets glued and screwed to this 2x4 in the back, that's going to be plenty strong. That kind of a cantilever with a little short piece of 2x4 unsupported in the back won't matter a bit. This is a job for the crosscut saw.
And I could hold this down with my knee. It would work perfectly fine. Only problem with that is arthritis in my knees makes it a little difficult to put this bony kneecap down on a piece of wood. So I use clamps. Line up on the cut. Saw. So, 